And uh, today we'll be covering how to scan and OCR paper invoices. This morning I have uh, together with me Mike Haggins, the Director of Ancora Software. Good morning, Mike. Good morning. So uh, it's about 8 after, so I want to be sensitive to everybody's time. Thanks for joining. So we're going to go ahead and, and get started, although I, I still have folks joining. Uh, we will have a full house this morning. This appears to be a fairly popular topic. So if, if you've got folks in your company that can't log in, that means we've maxed out our attendance. And uh, I'll track that. And if we have a group that needs it, I'll hold a, uh, a second session perhaps uh, in a couple days or next week. So our agenda for today, we, we'd like to share with you two main things. How scanning paper invoices can really automate two of the, what we're told from our customers are two of the toughest AP paper problems to solve. And that is, number one, manually entering invoices, uh, invoice data, and secondly, manually routing paper invo invoices for the uh, approval process. And then secondly, we're, we're going to actually have a live demonstration, and Mike is going to take us through one product called AncoraDox, which is actually our favorite product for automating paper invoices. Uh, as a company, Binary Office has uh, a handful of scanning products and other paper automation products that we've evaluated over our 14-year history of being in the paper automation business. And AncoraDox is the, the, the most exciting thing we've seen in the last few years as far as uh, particularly invoices go. So to share a little bit of information with you, I asked you when you registered to pick, if you had to, what was most important to you, either eliminating data entry or eliminating routing. And it was split actually quite evenly, 50-50. So half of you said routing. Half of you said uh, data entry. So we actually had some interesting uh, problems that were shared. We had um, Dick from Nor Northway Bank shared that uh, they're in the midst of an enterprise-wide uh, paperless endeavor. And uh, they were very interested in not only scanning invoices, but uh, additional uh, paperless automation tools to uh, s store and retrieve invoices once they're through the process. Uh, we had uh, Wanda, Wanda from PHLCVB uh, said storage and maintenance of the statute of limitations requirements was important. Uh, we had uh, Jen from Lolly and Pop said mass amount of invoices. <laughs> that was my favorite. Uh, we had Barbara from Fear and Peers uh, expanding approval or expediting approvals on AP invoices and eliminating paper files. So thank you for sharing, everybody. There was a handful more, but uh, you're, you're not alone in these problems. So to summarize, what, what issues we want to help you eliminate, you're probably experiencing some or, or all of these, manually entering invoice data, manually sorting invoices as they come in, uh, making copies, missing pay discounts, uh, paying the same invoice more than once, uh, keying data manually, physically routing documents. So uh, all of these problems you're probably experiencing. But we're going to focus on keying data, manually entering, and physically routing. my presentation here. Here we go. Okay. So what to do about all these problems? The main thing, if I leave you with anything this morning, the, the secret to, to this process, and this applies in, in our business when we talk to folks about automating any paper process, the key thing is you've 
you've got to scan your paper immediately. That means at the front of the process, as soon as invoices come into your department or at the front desk, have an admin person, a, a part-timer, a student, whatever the, the cheapest labor you can find possible to do this step. But you, you've got to scan at the front of the process, not at the end of the process. And with the new OCR technology that we're going to show you today, uh, you know, you, you could really have a 10-year-old do the scanning. You know, actually, uh, with the way kids are, uh, a 5-year-old probably. So do that up front. What that allows you to do is, in your case, capture invoices the minute they arrive in, in any format, wherever they come from. I don't care if it's from uh, uh, a piece of paper, an image stored in a filed folder directory on your computer, uh, supporting documents, uh, a multifunction device, an attachment to an email or a fax. We don't care where it comes from. Scan it immediately. So these are the things we promised that we would cover, and we'll, we'll cover all of these today at some point in our presentation. Uh, particularly, how are we going to help you reduce invoice processing costs by at least half? I know that sounds uh, impossible, but we do that all the time, every day. And we're going to do that in a number of ways you see listed here. So the main thing, we're going to cover manual data entry and electronic routing. That's one way we, we reduce costs. And we do that by extracting the header, footer, and sometimes line item invoice data using newer OCR technology. And we also do that by enforcing rules, being able to easily track invoices once they're scanned, get instant access to every step along the way since you don't have the paper. So one tip I want to leave with you, if you're evaluating products, look for both of these functionalities in the software, both the ability to eliminate the data entry and eliminate the manual routing. And look for automated setup of your vendor invoices. You don't want to have to continuously be uh, adding new templates and setting up new uh, vendor invoices. That's been the biggest problem in keeping AP shops from implementing software like this is the, the hassle of continuously setting up your vendor invoices. So another way that we reduce costs is instant access to POs and invoice. The tip here is to scan only once. What I mean by that is if you scan once and use capture software, then you can send the data to your accounting software on the back end, and you can send images to your storage system. If you have a document imaging system already, that's great. We can send the images there with the index the data. But you only have to scan once, not twice. So that allows you to automatically create a, a central repository, if you will, for all of your AP-related transactions. But you only do that scanning once. So another way we're going to help you reduce costs is by giving suppliers direct access to your invoice images once they're scanned. So the, the net effect of that is you free up your staff from, from the relentless questioning and inquiries from suppliers and, and also the relentless uh, hounding that typically goes on by AP staff uh, within your organization to get uh, payment approved through the uh, approval process. So. Again, scan up front and early uh, to give access, not at the end of the cycle. You've got to do it at the front. Same thing for auditors. Now, if, if we scan up front, we can get easy access to auditors. So the tip here is to, uh, you can set up a guest account, a guest auditor account in your document imaging system for easy access to an auditor, and you free up the staff having to search for files and provide those to an auditor. And lastly, if you scan up front, you, you can automate the entire process, and now you can capture uh, early pay discounts, and you can eliminate late fees quite easily, actually. And we do that by, again, streamlining the, the payment process by scanning up front. We, 
we automate that process by again by using the software, which will show you uh, when when Mike shows you the Ancora Docs software that we can automatically put rules in for your approval process and enforce those. So with that, did I did I miss anything, Mike? No, I think you're I think you're good, John. Okay. Well, with that, uh, I'm going to pass controls over to you, Mike. All right. And you should have controls, and we're going to take a look at uh, our favorite product here at Binary Office for again for scanning invoices. Uh, we uh, we actually have a handful of different scanning products that we offer our customers. Uh, based on their particular need, uh, but when it comes to invoices, and Coradox is our favorite product. And uh, with that, I'll pass it over to you, Mike. And if you would, uh, let's take a look at uh, starting with the scanning screen and what and Coradox can do for everybody. Sure. Thanks, John. Uh, good morning, everybody. My name is Mike Hagens. I'm the director of business development for Encora Software. Um, what I want to show you today are actually two separate demos. The first one is sort of a basic walk through the system of how we can bring images, invoices into the system, process them, uh, apply some business logic to make sure that we don't let things slip through that are in error, um, and show you just exactly how easy that can be to accomplish. The second demo that I'm going to do is actually a, um, a demo of a uh, sort of a mocked up, uh, if you like, PO matching uh, demonstration. There's a, uh, you know, we put together a little PO database for, for demonstration purposes. And I'm going to capture summary data, one of which is the PO number. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use that to look up against a PO database. Uh, and, and based on the logic um, and the business, business rules that are put in place, that will determine how I route those invoices through a back-end workflow. Okay? So there's a couple of things that I need you to understand before I actually start bringing invoices into the system. The first thing is that this system for today's demo is a brand spanking new installation. It has never seen an invoice before. It is, it is from that perspective sort of deaf, dumb, and blind. So the way that we will in process these invoices is going to be based on a set of algorithms uh, and business logic and, and a bunch of, of, for lack of a better term, secret sauce that we're going to apply to these invoices as they come into the system, having never seen them before. And one of the things that I want to show you very quickly, I'll describe this screen for you here in just a moment, but I want to show you this one screen. We're not going to spend a lot of time in here today. If you want to see more of this and talk more about what can, what can be done in this environment, I'm happy to do that uh, on a follow-up uh, follow meeting. But what I want you to understand is that at this moment, this thing here called the general template is the only information that we have to be able to process invoices. And again, all, of it, all it does is incorporates all of our, our algorithms and our pattern matching and our text in text information handling, etc. Okay, we'll come back to this screen for just a moment, but uh, let's get through some invoices first. Okay, so that's one ground rule. The second piece of information to understand is that I'm going to take a few invoices, I'm going to process them through the system to completion. What does that mean? It means that I'm going to run them through an OCR process automatically. I'm going to bring them up in front of an operator in what we call the verify environment. I'm going to work those invoices to, re to resolve any missing data or any data that was captured in error. And then I'm going to push those through to completion. What completion means is that I am going to capture both summary data and line item data. I'm going to balance each of the line items to themselves. In other words, the quantity times the unit cost must equal the line item total or I cannot proceed with that invoice. I'm also going to take all the line item totals and add either freight or tax to them and I'm going to make sure that that amount equals the invoice total. Again, I won't be able to proceed unless those business logic rules are met. Okay. 
Now, the thing to and and the thing to pay attention to here is that this is going to happen fairly quickly. We'll do it twice, but it, the first pass is going to go pretty quickly. As you can see uh, at the bottom of the screen here, down where my cursor is, bottom left, there are a series of tabs here. These tabs are functional, administrative. Uh, there are a variety of, of, of uh, tabs that could be down here based on your user permissions. I've set it up today to, to kind of keep it to a minimalistic approach. Okay? I am in the capture tab. What that means is that I, from here, I can drive a scanner. Okay? You can see that I could select any one of the number of scanners that I've got on my desktop here. Okay? I can monitor a directory out on the network someplace so that if you're scanning into that with multifunction devices or other scanners, I can monitor those directories and I can pick images up that drop in there. Or if you're bringing in email and you save an attachment off to a folder, I can monitor that folder. Okay? For today's demo, what I'm going to do is manually import some files that have already been scanned. Okay? And the way that we'll do that is we'll simply add pages. And we will uh, pull up a few invoices here. Well, like while you're doing that, this is here John. Folks, can I ask everybody to please mute your phone if you haven't done so already? We're getting some background conversations. Thanks. Thanks, John. All right, so I've got four invoices here that we're going to go ahead and process right now. And what I want to talk about with these invoices is to have you understand that these are what I call middle of the bell curve kind of invoices. They're not terribly complex. They're not terribly simplistic. They are just real live invoices from real live vendors out there that you may have to process. Okay? And what I'm going to do next is as follows. I'm going to queue these up and present them to the system. OCR is going to pick them up and process them automatically. And then I'm going to go become a verify operator and wait for that work to show up for me. Okay? Once I get that work, I'm going to move through that work as if I were an AP operator, which means I'm going to move through it as quickly as I can. Uh, I'll slow down just a little bit because otherwise you may blink and miss the whole thing. All right, so here we go. I'm going to queue this up. I'm going to go become a verify operator. When I see a little blue circle up here with a white exclamation point in it, I will know that that work is ready to, to process. Okay, we're just about there. So there's my indicator. So I'm just going to say, give me the next job in line. Here we go. Okay. I'm done. Now, what happened? Well, I just processed four invoices, captured all the summary data and the line item data balanced the invoices, or made sure that the, that the invoice is balanced, and if anybody had a stopwatch on that, I think the whole process took about 10 seconds. Now, yeah, I have never that, seen these. Uh, yeah, and that, Mike, that I want to call out, that right there is just for the start of this process is the key ingredient to much of the labor savings that we gain for our customers, because I want to point out, you captured all of that data in, what, a few keystrokes in those multiple invoices, including line item data, in, what, five seconds, ten right. seconds? Right. Amazing. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to show you how the system does what it does in terms of being able to avoid any pre-configuration of these vendor, vendor setups or knowledge about uh, vendors that the system hasn't ever seen before. Okay, One of the things that you saw me do during the process here was collect, tell the system where to locate the vendor name. And we do that very specifically on purpose for, new vin for, for invoices that we haven't seen before. Okay, We do that so that in, 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 in part uh, when you try and capture a vendor name, what you may end up facing <clears throat> is a situation where, let me go up to the top of this invoice here, where the vendor has gotten to be very proud of that graphic logo, 
but they haven't been kind enough to give you a nice clean block of text where their name is. So we're going to ask the operator on the first time that they ever see a new vendor, a new vendor's invoice, to just tell us, tell the system, where's the vendor name? Where do you want me to pick that up from? Because it may not be up here at the top of the page. It may be down in the bottom left-hand corner. It depends on the particular vendor. Once I tell it, however, I will only have to tell it once. I will not have to tell it again. And I'd like to show you what that, what that, what that results in. So I'm going to go ahead and complete these. And then I'm going to go back to the setup environment. Remember that there was only a general template here before. Now, however, not only do I have the templates for each of those vendor invoices that I just processed, the system also now knows where to find the vendor names on here, so I won't have to tell it that again. And what I'd like to do is to prove that point. Okay, I'm going to add some pages, but this time we're going to add them from a different set of images, and I'm just going to add a few. Uh, we'll do, uh, I don't know, let's do this one here, and we'll do another one from Mason. Okay. So if I open this, we'll run it back through OCR. As soon as I queue that up, I'll go over to Verify, wait for that work to show up. And of course, your operators aren't going to be sitting here waiting on work. That work is going to be OCR'd and presented, and it'll be ready for them when they log in. Okay. Now you can see that I've found the vendor name on this. It wasn't, I had to tell it the first time, but the second time I, I didn't have to do that. Now the way that I get through these invoices so quickly is that there is a special function key, F4, that we use on the keyboard. And what that, that F4 key is designed to do is to take me as an operator to the next point of required operator intervention. In other words, the next error that is on that invoice, the system is going to take me directly to it. I don't have to, to tab through each and every one of these fields like this. Okay? If there are no other errors on that invoice, when I hit F4, it will take me to the next invoice, like that. And again, I've found the vendor name, I've collected all the data, and if I hit F4, there's nothing wrong with the data, all the lines balance, the lines balance to the um, the lines balance to the invoice amount, and I'm all done. I save these changes off, okay, and I can then take those, I can send the data to uh, an ERP back end, your financial systems. Uh, there's a variety of ways that we can do that. Uh, we can also send the data and images to a downstream document repository. Um, so that you can you can have those archived and quit having to put paper into the file folders. Okay, now one quick thing here: what happens if it doesn't work like this? Well, let's take a look. If the system makes a mistake, I've just made a mistake for the system. Okay, so we're cruising along and going through our invoices, and we come into this invoice, and we'll start at the first field always. Okay, if I hit F4 at this point. The system is going to take me to the next point of required operator intervention and give me a message that basically says my row balance is not what it should be. It's out of balance. Now, as a savvy operator for my company, it's pretty easy to look up here and see the highlighted field, the highlighted piece of the image where this data came from and look at the, the data itself and go, oh, all I really need to do is to backspace and hit the 9 key and I'm good. But what I'd like to show you here is a tool that we put together that's invoked by another function key so that I can do this in circumstances where it's maybe not quite so clear or there's more errors than just the one. I can invoke uh, a balance dialog through F6 that looks like this. Okay, the key thing to see on this screen is this bright red highlighted field up here. This is the difference that the system sees between the calculated total of the invoice and the total of the invoice as read by the OCR engine. And I can run down to the bottom of the image here and I can look and say, okay, well, here's, here's, the, here's the value of the total invoice amount. So the system read that correctly. There's still a, I'm still missing nine cents someplace in the calculation. So I'm going to go up and I'm going to look at my line items. And these are the line item total fields as related to uh, the data, okay? 
And so the image, they're set right next to the image segment that the data came from, and the operator's job here is to simply look at, here's the value that was captured, here's the value on the page. Here's the value that was captured, here's the value on the page. Oh, wait, that's, a minute, that's an error. So I'm going to click on that. And then when I click on this, I also bring up the other fields that are related to that line item. And you can see those right up here in this sort of third shaded row here. So there's my description, there's my quantity, there's my price. Now I'm going to go ahead and correct this error, but what I want you to watch is what happens to the difference field up here at the very top. Okay? So if I just do backspace 9, I've corrected the error and the system tells me that I've corrected the error and that I don't have anything else to fix because this difference has now gone to zero, the red highlighting is gone, and so my job as an operator is to simply close this screen. Okay, it has corrected the data for me here in this item amount field and it has moved me down to the end of the invoice. Now if I hit F4, I'm good to go. Okay, so it's pretty much just that straightforward. We've put a lot of time and energy into trying to build an environment and a set of tools to make it as easy as it possibly can be for operators to be able to correct errors when they do occur. And we put an even more, even greater amount of time and energy into trying to avoid errors in the first place. Okay? Uh, we're going to hold Q&A until after uh, the second, second demo here, which is what I'm going to go to next. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and save these changes, and we're done with that piece of the demo. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into a workflow demo. And I'll go, all I need to do in order to do that is to log off and log in to a different system, in this case, the workflow demo. Okay. All right. And you can see that nothing has really changed on the way that the interface is presented, but you'll see a change here in a moment. So what I'm going to do in this setup, you can see that I already have a number of invoices that I've processed that are, that are all sitting in here. Okay. We're going to go back into the capture environment, and again, I'm going to add some pages. Okay. And we'll pull those from a slightly different location. And I'm going to do just three of these because I want to keep this. I want to be sensitive to everybody's time, but you'll get the you'll get the point here fairly quickly. All right, so you recall all of this. We're going to go ahead and queue these images up, and you can see that, again, these are kind of pretty straightforward sorts of things. We'll queue these up. OCR is going to go ahead and run. I'm going to go become a verify operator, and I'll wait for that work to get all done. Okay, there's my indicator, so I'm going to say next job. Now, right away, you can tell that the Verify screen looks entirely different because I've, got, I've now got the image over on the left-hand side and the data on the right-hand side. And that simply means that we have control over configuration of this environment so we can present it to your operators any way that they're most comfortable. The other thing that I would like you to notice is that these three fields here, order amount, max amount over PO, and send to department, these are fields that are highlighted in a light blue color. And that indicates to the operator that these are read-only fields as far as they are concerned. In other words, they cannot edit the contents and they cannot key any information into those fields. So we're going to be talking about invoice approval, and we're also going to be doing that in the realm of a purchase order match, a two-way match to a PO system. So the way that the logic is set up here is as follows. I'm going to be capturing the PO number, the invoice date, the invoice number, and the invoice amount. I may also capture the vendor name. However, once I confirm as an operator that this PO number is indeed the right number, okay, and I can look down here on the image and it says purchase order, and there's my number. Okay, once I confirm that, the system is going to take this purchase order number and go out and interrogate a PO database looking for a match to that purchase order. And if it finds a match, it's going to populate the vendor name field with whatever is in the database and, and dis discard the OCR results. It may be identical. It may not. Okay? The other thing it's going to do is it's going to populate the amount of the purchase order, and it's going to populate this max amount over PO rule. And what this says is that for this particular vendor, the maximum amount that an invoice may be above the PO amount is X, whatever that number is. Okay? 
So, and then I'm going to compare the purchase order amount with the invoice amount and see if it violates that rule. If I don't have a PO number, that's a violation of a rule. So in the case of any rule violations, I'm automatically going to send this to the supervisor's department for invoice approval and, and, and um, exception handling. If all of the data is correct, all right, if I don't have any issues with this, with this invoice, I'm going to send it to the receiving department for them to confirm receipt of goods. All right? So let's go through a few of these. There's my PO number. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter, and that will confirm the PO. The system has gone out, populated vendor name, populated the order amount, the, the max amount over that PO that's allowed for World Carpets, and you can see that it's being sent to the supervisor. Why is that? Well, it's because the invoice amount is $50 greater than the purchase order amount. So there's a violation of that business logic right there. Okay? But I, as an operator, don't have to go any further than this. I just know this going to the supervisor. I can see that the data is OK. Uh, data's, the data is valid. If I want to tab through it, I certainly can do that. Okay? But that's Mike, as far you, as I need to go. Mike, for our audience, can you explain, uh, because everybody's approval rules and process is different, right? So how, how would we handle somebody's process that needs to go to somebody, let's say, different than a supervisor or can we they do that at the tail end, John? Yeah. All right. Let me get through these, and you can watch the process, and then I'll I, because I have every intention of explaining exactly what you're asking for there. Great. Thanks. Okay. So we're going ahead and, and hit the F4 key, and that will accept this invoice and bring up to the next invoice. So this invoice, there's my purchase order number. I say OK. It populates the vendor name, populates the order amount, the max amount, and this is going to go to the receiving department because. Even though the invoice amount is $100 different than the order amount, it is less than the order amount. So the max amount rule has not been violated. So all of this data is OK. It's going to go to receiving. I'm going to hit F4. We'll move on. Now here's an invoice that has no PO number. And you guys all know that there are just a myriad of ways that you could, you could handle a situation like this. But in our case, for, for, you know, to keep the demo pretty straightforward, what I'm going to do is, if I hit the Enter key, obviously I don't have a PO number to go look up, but I'm going to go ahead and capture the vendor name from OCR by going over here and putting my cursor on the vendor name and clicking on them. So now I have the vendor name, and I've populated the max amount rule, but this is all immaterial because it's going to go to the supervisor regardless. I don't have a PO number. Okay? So I hit F4, I move on, and now I'm going to save the changes for this. Okay. So I'm done with the capture component of this. What I need to do now is I need to get it into and start moving it through the invoice approval cycle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to log off, and I'm going to log back in as a workflow administrator. And in this view, this is going to present to the administrator all of the work that is in the system in a sort of a spreadsheet style here, and this status field is an indicator of what work is outstanding and what work has been completed. And you'll see what it looks like at the tail end of the process when it's completed. Okay? So there's my status. These three invoices are pending. Two of them are going to the supervisor's department. One of them is going to receiving. Okay? And here's the data associated with those. Now this expiration date field out here in front is a configuration setting. And what this does is allows you to either take advantage of early pay discounts or avoid uh, late pay penalties. Because what happens here is that as if, if this invoice is sitting in here and has not been processed by this date, this entire row is going to be highlighted in this color red that says expired. And everyone that logs into the system that can see that invoice will see it as highlighted in red so that they know to take immediate action and get that one done. Okay. All right, so the, the administrator is actually not going to really do anything. They just want to keep tabs on what's going on, so I'm going to log off. I'm going to log in as a supervisor. Okay, and here are the two invoices that were sent to me. Okay, I'm going to open up the first one, and the very first thing that I see here is, an, is a message generated by the business logic under the covers that is set up for this workflow environment. So this is your first clue, John, about everybody has different workflows and different rules. This is generated by one of those custom rules. 
In this case, it's telling me that the check amount, check amount devi amounts deviation, and what that means is that I need to look at the invoice amount and the order amount, and I do in fact see that they are different. Okay. Now, as a supervisor, um, I just happen to know that between the time that the PO was issued and the time that the invoice was received, that the vendor had a price increase, which was approved by our management team. So it's okay to go ahead and process this invoice. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and say, I'm going to add a note that says price increase approved, okay to pay. And I'm just going to send it on to the payables folks and let them pay it. Okay. We'll take the next one, and it says I'm missing a PO number. Again, there's a, there's a myriad of things you could do here. In this case, if you have the PO number or can get it, you can simply type it in and complete this, this transaction properly. But in this case, the supervisor is going to look at this and say, hey, this is like the, dozen, the, the tenth time they've done this to us. Do not pay. So my queue now is empty as supervisor. So what I'm going to do now is log off and run over to become a receiving individual. Thank you very much. Okay, so here is the invoice from that was sent originally to receiving. Okay, we'll open that one up. You'll notice that there's no message over here that uh, that gives me any kind of a warning. So receiving's job when they receive something is to simply go out and confirm receipt of goods. So they go out to their dock or they go to the, their their receiving log and they say, okay, yep, we got two of these things. Great. I'm going to say all received. I don't need to do anything else. I'm done. My queue is empty. Okay. So now, the last piece of this puzzle are the nice folks in the payables department. When I log in there, here are my three invoices. And you can see the one in the middle has been highlighted in this orange color, which means it is reject pending. This is the one that had no PO number, and the supervisor said, do not pay. Okay. So we'll open up the first one, and this is the one where the supervisor said, hey, the price increase was approved. It's okay to pay this one. So I'm, I'm payables. I'm going to go ahead and pay it. Okay. Now the system is auto-generating a note that says the invoice amount is actually above the ordered amount. Are you okay? You, you know, you okay with that? And the supervisor has already said that that's okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and say yes. Okay. We open up this one, and this one's missing a PO number again. If you have the PO number can get it, you can key it in here, complete the transaction properly. In this case, we can't get it. We're just going to reject that invoice. Boom. And last but not least, we'll bring this one up. This one was okay from receiving to begin with. We're going to go ahead and pay that one. We're done. And then at the end of the day, the workflow administrator comes in to take a look at what work has been done. And here, in my, here you can see the status change. I had two of them that were approved and one of them that was rejected. Okay. All right. So this is that 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 ends that portion of the demo. Now, what I'd like to do next is to answer John's question for you briefly. And the way I'm going to do that is to sort of log back in as a system administrator. And I'm going to go to the setup tab in workflow. Now, I'm not going to get too deep into this, but there are there are there there is no such thing as cookie cutter workflow. Everybody has different departments, different individuals in those departments, different rules about how things need to be routed, maybe based on, on, on uh, you know, some of them may be based on, oh, it's over 5,000 or it's over 10,000 or it's whatever, okay? In these cases, all of that has to be done in a, in a, a somewhat customized fashion. So we broke it up into two pieces. This, this, this user interface that you see here is used to set up what we call the infrastructure for workflow. In other words, here's the list of departments or individuals that are going to participate in the workflow process, in the, in, in the invoice approval process. Okay? And for each one of these departments, there is going to be a set of buttons or tasks that are unique to that department. These are the things that that, that department or that individual may do when they enter the workflow environment. Okay? The custom piece of this is down here in this little thing called call event, and I'm not going to get too wrapped around it, but there is a set of code that is written that is unique to your specific environment that is put in place and called at the appropriate points to be able to execute your specific logic. 
and that is done either by the resellers, the reseller environment, or if they need help, we'll do it as well. Okay? So what this becomes in the end is a solution that is uniquely tailored to your environment without a great deal of, of time and effort uh, to get it up and running. Okay? From the, from the time that I install a system until the time that I can begin to process invoices is typically a matter of hours, not days and weeks and months. So it is uh, a very simple environment to get up and running. All right, John, I'm going to call it quits there for and take a deep breath and, and see if we can answer some of these questions. Sure. Well, thanks, Mike. That, that was... Uh, hopefully cl clear to everybody. We do have a bunch of, of uh, questions coming in, so let me scroll back up and we'll, we'll see if we can't uh, get through all of these and get everybody on to their, their work day. So let's see. Um, I have a question from Monique. Martinez, uh, she wants to know how does it work for invoices in different languages, if we or currencies? Can we handle that? That's we can. Um, we have we have the OCR engines that we use under the covers supports uh, a, a long list of different countries' invoices. So whether you're dealing with British pounds or or uh, Canadian dollars or or um, you know Mexican pesos or what have you. Uh, that is all built into the engine, uh, and we just need to tell the system again. This is part of what what gets done during the the initial configuration for your environment. So if you've got multi, you know, if you if you are a a, uh, a global company and you're processing invoices for multiple com countries, we can support that. Great. Uh, let's see what else we have. Um... Uh, we have several questions, looks like, from Stacy. Thanks, Stacy. Uh, you mentioned exporting the process data for import into other software systems. How does that work, and what formats do you support? Okay, so to talk to back-end systems, whether that is ERP systems, uh, financial systems, what have you, or document management systems, uh, there are a variety of ways that we can accommodate communication with those systems, uh, and that ranges from uh, the most simplistic and, and probably easiest approach is what's called a, a flat file, which is just a, a text file with the data that can be exported out of our system and then imported by your back end. Uh, it goes all the way from there to a database to database communication protocol that's set up uh, so that uh, there's no translation of the data, it's just simply written uh, from one database to another database. Uh, in the case of uh, uh, content management or, or document management systems, uh, there is a file of both the images and the data that you want to send out to, uh, to be used as index values, and it's the same philosophy there. If we need to do a tight integration, in other words, a true integration where we have to actually write a little bit of code or write what's called a connector, we can certainly do that as well. Yeah, and Stacy, I would add this. This is John at Binary Office. That that is what my company does for a living. So, part of our setup process, we would set that up for you to uh, send the data wherever you need specifically. So that's part of the services that we normally offer in our business as as a a paper automation company. But a great question, though. Uh, so let's see. We have a bunch more coming in. Let's see. We have. Uh, a uh, question from Lisa Marshall. Thanks, Lisa. Uh, Lisa asks, if we have POs, then the, it sounds like they have folks who do receiving. Would, would they need to update the information on invoices, I guess, as part of the approval process? Or if it's, is it unique to our company, she asks, that we can have other people do the receiving? That. Um, that one was a little fuzzy, John, but let me answer it this way. Uh, when a receiving uh, operation is involved, uh, or and, and, and especially if receiving data is available, 
then the system can be set up to perform what's called a three-way match. And what that means is that you have a purchase order, you match the invoice against the purchase order to validate that, that the invoice data is correct and that you're not being overbilled, etc. But you also can then go match against the receiving information for that purchase order and that invoice so that you know that everything has been received. And that can all be done uh, in, a, in, a prime, in an automated fashion as long as we have access to the data. Okay? If the, uh, it, I mean, it may, it may, it may be worth a, uh, a follow-on conversation, John, specifically with Lisa and her, and her team uh, to get yeah, to the details of that. Yeah, I agree. I think uh, if I understand Lisa correctly, the, Lisa, the, the steps can be modified for anybody's process. So if you have uh, your DCs or receiving clerk or somebody else you want to be part of the, uh, the approval process, that can be anyone you want us to make it. And it can be a, an approval step in the process that we set up for you. Or like Mike said, it can be an automated check that where the software goes out and, and looks up some information that's already in your back end systems. So completely configurable and we do that for you. Okay, we'll take a few more since it's uh, getting close to 10 to 9 Pacific. Um, let's see. Here's a great question. How do you set up alternates for approvals since you need that in case someone is out sick or on vacation, et cetera? It's a great question. Um, and it, it, this goes back to the, the two pieces of the puzzle as, as regards uh, implementation of the workflow process. If you want alternatives, then we will, that, that, that is part of the workflow definition and can be invoked in that custom element that we talked about. This is again uh, one of those things that is uh, typically unique to individual companies. Uh, certainly in the way that you want that, that type of alternative to be invoked. Uh, and or released, so we can we can certainly support that. And a lot of times, in related to that question, uh, in in my business, we we a lot of times will set up work queues. Uh, those are groups of folks that have access to to jobs uh, and handle it that way, so that anybody that's part of that group or team can can work a particular set of invoices. Right, and that, that was exactly the, the, um, the, the circumstance of the demo that I just did. So the, there, were, there were several departments. There was a receivables department, a supervisor department. Any of the people that are part of that group would have access to be able to log in and process those invoices. Right. That, that's our recommendation. Uh, everybody, usually we would recommend that, the, that you, we set up uh, user groups and then we put people in those groups accordingly so that uh, you have teams of people and whether that's uh, by vendor alphabetically or geographically what have you will set up those groups accordingly that's the best way to handle uh, people that are out uh, here's a here's a fun question can invoices be reviewed approved via a web or mobile app for supervisors or managers or do you have to log in uh, from a PC at the moment, you need to log in from a PC. We realize that uh, the mobile side of this is certainly something that we want to support going forward. So we have a long list of things like this in, in, our, in our development queues. Um, but right this moment, you'll need to log in through a, through a, uh, through a, through a PC. And is that a direct connection, Mike, or a web browser? That's a direct connection. Thanks. So uh, that's a good question. Thank you, Michelle, for that one. Uh, we do offer here at Binary Office uh, document imaging products that uh, for the storage and retrieval long term of, of completed invoices, and that does have a, a mobile option. So let's see. We'll take a few more and then uh, call it a day. Uh, Another good question uh, from Lisa. Uh, Lisa asks about setting up a uh, a check step 
for new invoices if they want to step to maybe get that uh, a new vendor set up in their ERP system before an invoice is processed can you make that some type of uh, a process step um, there's you know there may be a variety of ways to go about that the one that comes to mind most quickly is to go ahead and capture the data process the invoice in other words but you would hold export of data for invoices that that do that that do not match up against a vendor that's in the master vendor file I would do that step uh, probably in a workflow uh, in the invoice approval side of things uh, simply because it's easier to hold on to them there and leave them you know sort of in limbo until you get them set up and then once they're set up you go ahead and process them through workflow and then that data and the images go out right perfect because you know in most cases uh, you know vendors are going to have to be set up before a payment can be can be made right right exactly okay uh, let's see we'll take uh, one or two more uh, oh here's a, a good one from David thanks David David asked the the F4 key that we use to move from uh, required action to required action, can the F4 key be remapped to a different key if someone wanted to use a, a different key for some reason? Sure. Absolutely. Okay. Well, I, I think that's, uh, we've actually done a good job, gotten through just about all of the the questions I think Mike uh, so I'm going to show my screen back and uh, thank you for that Mike we really sure. appreciate it my pleasure thanks recap. for yeah you bet so everybody just to recap and then we'll sign off what what we just showed you is how to reduce invoice processing costs I think you can get a feel now how we can uh, claim we get such uh, such high uh, cost reductions by eliminating the typing of data. Uh, we showed how to scan different invoices from different vendors. We showed how to handle invoices that the system's never seen before. And that that's the, the key difference in the AncoraDoc software. When I compare to other scanning systems, there, there's nobody else that can do that and easily handle uh, new and different invoices. So. What staff's required to be successful on a project like this? Really pretty minimal. Uh, we will need some involvement from your technical folks, but uh, very little. And binary Office will handle all of the technical issues and set up. Uh, and then we just need a key person on the AP side to coordinate with and handle the setup of the, uh, uh, the electronic routing rules, if you will. So your homework uh, before you leave, folks, if, you, if you'd like to investigate this further and figure out what kind of savings you could have, is this. Start by add up your savings. Take a look at reducing invoice processing, um, how you're going to, uh, what costs you guys can eliminate by uh, data entry savings, by the routing labor savings, and add those up. The, the rules enforcement savings, the error reduction, late fees, early pays, and add all of these up. And don't overlook the, the inquiry reduction that's going to take place. That's a big one. And then uh, let me know if you want to have your own Prove It demo. We do that all the time where we'll take your invoices, guys, and show you AncoraDocs software uh, reading your invoices. And then you can compare your, your savings to the cost. So what I'd like everybody to do next, if, if you are interested, go to my website, binaryoffice.com, and in, on the lower left corner of the home screen, if you scroll down there, you'll see a request form to get your own Prove It demo. And you can fill that form out, and I'll take you quickly there. Here's my website. Click that link there, and you can fill out the request form, and we'll be happy to schedule uh, your own Prove-It demo, and we'll take a couple of your invoices live. Uh, we don't have to see them ahead of time. 
and uh, we'll show you the software working with your invoices. It's a very short form, just a couple of fields, and that'll send uh, a request to me, and I'll get a hold of you. So that's it, everybody. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, Mike Hagens from Ancora, thank you so much. Appreciate it. My pleasure, John. Thanks for, thanks for setting this up. You bet. Thanks, everybody. And please do fill out that form and uh, request your own Prove-It demo. We'll be happy to show you your invoices. Thanks, everybody.